Well, socio-political socio analyst Oliver Dixon joins us in studio today. Good morning to you, Oliver. Morning, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to have you with us. I'm great. Fantastic. Now, Oliver, firstly, what did you personally make of that judgment back uh, in April of 2016 when they said that decision was irrational? What has been your position on that? I think uh, we, when we're going to talk about that specific decision and the rationality around it, we need to go back all the way to 2009 when the charges were dropped just before President Jacob Zuma was instated as president of the country. The consideration at the time was that having charges against a standing president makes him unfavorable, one, to the markets, international community, investors, and all that sort of thing. And him having to focus on his charges distracts him away from the job of being the president, running the country and the day-to-day -day administration there. There was the rationality that went into it, and it fell under what they called policy and justice, those sort of considerations. The court says, no. No. Um, and the appeal that, the, that they now put in front of the court says that any consideration within the court must have a consideration of policy and justice. Mm -hmm. Now, are you talking about 2009? Because now, Mkwede Mche had always maintained that there was political interference, that between Leonard McCarthy and Bulela Nimbuka, yeah. there was some sort of political interference because of the phone calls that were tapped. Yeah. So beyond that, you're saying another reasoning that supported the decision was that he was a standing president. You didn't want that kind of publicity around him. Yeah, so, so that was the idea about rationality around that time. Uh, the argument is that uh, uh, it was rational to, for the charges to have been dropped around the time. And so the DA pursued this case for a very long time. Um, Importantly, then, uh, they, they finally was granted access one to the spy tapes. They had then had to go study the spy tapes and sorry, excuse me, discover if there was anything uh, incriminating in the spy tapes. They have now done so and want the charges to be reinstated. We don't know as the public whether there's anything incriminating in the spy tapes. We may never know. But what's important, however, is that a body that one is, uh, 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 you know, coveted to uh, study evidentiary, evidentiary uh, bodies of work in terms of determining and adjudicating justice should have the opportunity to do so. Jacob Zuma and his team doesn't believe they have to do so, right? So this is why they're at the Supreme Court of Appeal, and if they fail here, they can go to the Constitutional Court mm -hmm. in that instance. So I think importantly, though, um, it, it, it sets a one, it, this case is important one because it sets precedence for us in terms of like just understanding uh, 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 um, what the powers of certain institutions are. One, there's a conversation about the over, overreach in power by the court, by the NPA, and various other, by the NDPP, uh, and, and various other bodies. And so this case, one, will, give us, will allow us to determine clarity around that. Why is this important? South Africa's democracy is, is, is incredibly young, and we learn about the powers and limitations of our institutions all the time. One such example is the public protector, for instance. We, would, we didn't have much clarity around the, the extent to which she had what that office had power. And so a court case made that clear to us. I think in this instance, this court case will have a similar function in a way it draws the line in terms of what power certain institutions have and what power the court itself has over certain institutions. And I think that's the importance of this case. Mm -hmm. But then beyond this, this word that we keep hearing these days of judicial overreach and uh, perhaps separation of powers here, if a judge or we have a, a full bench going to prefer char charges against a specific, demanding or instructing you to prefer charges against a certain individual as the NPA, you then charge that person who must still come back to them and they must try that person. So what does that say though? No, 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 no. And that's, and that's, I think, where we need to make the distinction. The court is not saying that the NPA must prefer charges against a certain person. That distinction is very important mm -hmm. to make. Here's why. The NPA just says these charges, it was irrational to, to overturn drop. these charges. Yes. You should still pursue these charges. In what priority you pursue them is entirely up to you. Right? The NPA can't say that the, 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 this case, the Jacob Zuma case, must be a number one priority case in the NPA. The court's not saying that. The court just says it, it, it was over, irrational to overturn these cases. Uh, it was irrational to, 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 to uh, you know, like get rid of this, these charges. Importantly, what does that mean? It means it is up to the discretion of the NPA 
in terms of when, to what extent, and how they will pursue these charges. Point is, they still have to pursue them. Whether they, try to, whether they choose to pursue them now, whether they choose, uh, choose to pursue other cases that they, th seem to, that they think are more priority cases, is entirely up to discretion, the discretion of that uh, institution. And I don't think the court is overreaching in that sense. The court is only saying that there's merit for a trial, and a trial must be had. That's it. Mm -hmm. So what would be the process now? They're going, the NPA is also appealing that ruling from April back in 2016. So what would be the process going ahead if perhaps they lose this case today? If they lose, uh, if the NPA loses the case, um, they can appeal to, they can appeal to this, uh, the Constitutional Court. However, if they win the case, the Democratic Alliance and, 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 and their associated organizations there can appeal this case also to the, uh, to the uh, um, constitutional court. Mm -hmm. I think it will get to that point. It, I think it will be more interesting to hear this uh, case being argued at a constitutional court level because constitutional courts speak to matters of, of broad constitutionality and I think uh, it will be fantastic to, to sort of just have this case in that court specifically and particularly. This is for a number of reasons. One, because uh, it's, 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 there's finality in what the constitutional court says. Mm -hmm. Two, we're talking about the president here. Uh, and finality is important in terms of speaking about the president's office because if it comes from the high court, there's no real there's discomfort around it. No, maybe we should appeal. And I think it, the importance here is that we're able to get that sort of finality. Mm -hmm. So beyond that, it becomes more of an academic case where yes. we all learn something. Yes. Thank you very much. That's Dixon Oliver, political analyst, talking to us here at ANN7.